Oh well, I don't think I've done a proper 5080 Cyberpunk benchmark. So here it is. Uh, we're pairing the 5080 with the 9800X 3D uh, running at 4.7 gigahertz base speeds and uh, 64 GB of DDR5 memory running at 6000 megahertz. You can see all the details right here with the MSI afterburner. Nothing is overclocked. And uh, let's uh, jump into the benchmark, starting on 4K settings and working our way down to 4040p and 1080p. All right, starting things off on 4K maxed out with path tracing and DLA settings and no frame generation for now, okay? So uh, that's how we are starting it out. And uh, this is the native settings performance with path tracing maxed out on 4K, you're getting 18 FPS close to 20 fps and uh, that's all you can get with the 5080 you can see the memory is maxed out 15 gb used and also the gpu power is going above the power limit with this which is 360 watts as going above that so it's absolutely cranked out the gpu is at its uh, maximum limit and uh, it can only pull 17 to 80 18 fps and that is the raw power of the 5080 on 4k in cyberpunk okay now let's uh try turning off path tracing and just keep ray tracing on and everything else maxed out so just turning off our path tracing will give us additional almost 15 fps from uh, 19 to 35 34 so almost close to 20 fps improvement when you turn off path tracing but it is still maxing out the gpu with the gpu memories almost 16 gigabytes and uh, still Showing more than 350 watts of power. So, there you go. That's uh, with ray tracing and no path tracing. Native settings. And now, without any ray tracing, just ultra settings. So, we are turning off the ray tracing right here. So, let's see how that goes. So, from 35, we are getting 42 FPS. Which is not a significant improvement. So, you'd rather have ray tracing turned on rather than just going like, you know, without any ray tracing because it gives you like a 5% improvement without it. So I don't see a point turning on ray tracing with the 5080 because the improvement is pretty minor. And uh, right now you're using 12 GB of VRAM, almost 13 GB, and pretty much maxing out the GPU power. So, you know, 4K is pretty intensive. So uh, that's what it is. Okay, so that's ultra settings. We tried everything and we are not able to get 60 FPS. So so let's go down to high settings and native DLAA and see if uh, we are actually able to get 60 plus FPS. And uh, looks like we are. We are getting more than 60, most close to 80 FPS. That is, that's pretty good on 4K DLAA. So ultra will take you down to 40 FPS. But on high settings, you're getting double the performance. So uh, that's something I'd like to see. On you know, high settings, you can play the game absolutely fine with the 5080 it's still using about 13 GB of uh, VRAM still around maxing out the GPU power but this GPU is super cool so it's staying at 60 degrees Celsius you know I just love the the overall thermos and this GPU it just never goes above 60 or 62 degrees Celsius even maxed out that's something to be really glad about all right now let's try some DLSS upscaling with uh, ray tracing overdrive and see how that goes so let's try with the performance because i know if you just try something else it's not going to be a playable experience so performance let's see because it's a really intensive uh, task for any gpu with path tracing and with performance mode we are getting close to 60 fps it's not great but still playable it's a really smooth experience if you ask me because anything about 50 plus fps it is a playable experience for me so and it goes above 60 as well in uh, a lot of areas. So, you know, with the 5080, I think this is the best way to play on 4K. Just go uh, absolute crank out everything and then set the DLSS to performance. So that's great. All right, uh, now let's turn it down to ultra performance since uh, performance wasn't quite enough to get 60 FPS. So ultra performance, which means we are upscaling from 1080p to 4K. So that will give us a 90 FPS experience. And you can see the 9800X 3D is using about 50% usage. So uh, yeah, the, the CPU is uh, at hard work here, not just the GPU. 
We are still using about 12 GB of uh, VRAM and uh, 270 watts of power consumed, even on ultra performance with bad tracing turned on. Oh my God, what a jerk. This guy just slammed into me, man. Oh yeah, I think it's like a street war going on. It's a new feature in the new update, I guess. Not sure, but yeah. Uh, ultra performance, you can get more than 80 FPS. But you know, I prefer performance because that's a little bit more clearer on the edges, especially on a 4K monitor. So yeah, it's a really good experience. And now let's uh, try on DLSS frame generation on DLSS quality mode. Okay, so for that, uh, let's just restart the game because without restarting, you won't see any of the MFG features. So after restart, we are here again on 4K and DLSS quality 4X frame gen. This is with patch tracing turned on. So we are getting 130 FPS with, a, with an average of 130 FPS. And yes, there is the input lag, I can feel that, especially when you're playing on quality mode because you're getting about 40 FPS average without the frame gen. So anything uh, from below 60 FPS using frame gen is gonna have a lot of input delay and you can actually feel that in the game. So yeah, 130 FPS MFG with everything maxed out on DLSS quality. All right, now from quality mode, let's go to performance mode and see how that's gonna be. Okay, so from 130 FPS, we are closing 180 FPS, which still has a little bit of input delay, but it's much better than quality mode since we are getting close to 60 FPS and it's upscaling from that. So uh, it's a much better experience if you are on performance mode. So yeah, it looks good on screen because you're getting more frames, but in reality, when you turn the mouse around, it's not as good, all right? Okay, now what we're gonna do is go uh, DLAA and turn off uh, ray tracing and to keep everything else the same with 4x frame gen. And that gives us about the same as uh, path tracing performance DLSS with 4x frame gen. And it looks about the same without any of the advanced visuals with the path tracing. So my opinion is not worth it. Like who would go for this option, right? If you can get pretty much the same visuals I mean, better visuals, except that you gotta do a little bit of upscaling, which still looks sharp as hell on 4K and get uh, pretty much the same performance. So this is not worth it, you know? So that's, uh, that's how it is on DLAA with no ray tracing at all and with 4X frame gen. And now we're gonna go low settings with 4X frame gen and DLAA. Uh, let's see from ultra to low how much FPS we can get with the 4x frame gen and uh, we are getting 290 fps almost so 130 to 300 almost that's a huge jump that's 150 fps increase but you lose all the special effects and everything that you get with path tracing you know how it is even the shadow quality is too low but yeah you get major frames and now finally let's see how much we can actually squeeze out of the 5080 the absolute maximum FPS you can get on 4K on Cyberpunk. So we're going everything low, ultra performance, low settings with MFT 4X. That gives us a 450 FPS average. So uh, that's that's insane. Getting 400 plus FPS in Cyberpunk is uh, it's a pretty impressive sight. I'm not gonna lie. But is it worth it? Definitely not. This game is meant to be played with absolute cranked out settings if you can. And with the 5080, you definitely can with a little bit of upscaling. So it's funny to see the FPS, but that's about it. So that's uh, 4K settings. Now let's go to 1440p. Okay, now on 1440p, uh, we are going the same thing that we did on 4K. So uh, DLAA and ray tracing overdrive. And let's see what we got. So we're looking at about 35 to 42 FPS range. Pretty much logged on to 40 right here, so uh, so this is what we got on DLSS quality mode on 4K, which is actually 1440p, so similar kind of performance. But this time we're not maxing out the GPU at all because, you know, it's 1440p, and less stress on the GPU. So unless you're going 4K, it's not going to max out the GPU, but still 40 FPS is all you get because that's the raw power of the 5080 on 1440p. Now let's try turning off ray tracing, I mean path tracing, and try just uh, ray tracing and see how that goes. See if we can actually make it to 60 FPS. 
and yes it barely makes it to 60 and drops below 60 which is a which is a shame you know 1440p you're not able to get 60 fps with ray tracing on and no pad tracing on native settings this is why the 5080 is an underwhelming card the 4090 was pretty much able to get more than 60 fps in these situations because it had more ray tracing cards and overall bandwidth and everything so you know this is why this is a such a terrible value for fifteen hundred dollars so yeah not able to get 60 uh, consistent 60 fps uh with pad tracing i mean with the ray tracing turned on all right let's continue the pattern here let's just turn off ray tracing and just go uh ultra preset so now we are able to get more than 60 fps consistently and absolutely getting really really good frame rates about 90 91 fps average that's pretty good so without ray tracing you're gonna play the game on 1440p uh without any issues it's gonna be a really smooth experience using about 10 gb of uh, vram actually 11 gb and still using more than 300 watts of power um and the 9800x 3d is also working kind of hard so like almost 30 to 40 percent usage is a little bit high on these settings you know and uh, yeah so pretty good experience all right now let's try turning back path tracing on and actually go to uh, dlss quality because we are getting 90 plus fps on just ultra settings so we don't have to go lower than that so let's just try this one okay so with path tracing on uh, dlss quality we are getting 60 plus fps so for me this is gonna be my option if i had a 4040p monitor and a 5080 i'll be playing cyberpunk like this any day because you're getting pretty smooth fps experience and you get to crank out everything to the max and it only uses uh 10 gb of vram and uh less than 300 watts of power so this is the way to go for me yeah 60 fps is a pretty solid uh, experience you can just lock the frames to 60 and have a excellent experience all right so this will be my recommended settings on 4040p with the 5080. Okay, since we have a solid footing with that, uh, let's just try on MFG with those settings. So DLSS quality, ray tracing overdrive with 4x frame gen. Uh, let's see how that goes. Since we already have a 60 FPS base, it doesn't feel as laggy uh, with the input delay. And it's pretty smooth. I'm getting 200 and something, 220 FPS, which is a pretty impressive frame rate especially when uh, you're maxing out everything even though it's uh, dlss quality this is still pretty impressive and to see a pad tracing and 200 fps now, this is what nvidia markets uh, these 50 series cards as being able to play these games on 200 plus fps you know with everything cranked out but there is still a, a small delay though don't get me wrong Okay, now finally on 1440p, let's go all the way down to ultra performance low settings and uh, maxed out 4x frame gen. Just like in 4k, let's just see how much we can squeeze out of the 5080 on 1440p with absolute low settings possible. And uh, holy moly, we are getting about 600 FPS. So on 4k, we were able to get, I think, 200 something FPS on these settings. But on 1440p, we're getting about 600 FPS. And again, it's impressive seeing these numbers, right? But it don't mean anything. I gotta say, there was pretty much no delay at all because, you know, getting a really solid FPS and it's getting cranked up to the max. So yeah, it's pretty impressive for the eyes, but nothing adds to it. That's it, that's uh, 1440p. Now let's uh, go to 1080p. All right, now finally on 1080p, let's just do the same thing. Let's go max out everything on DLAA, ray tracing overdrive, and see what we got. Okay, so that gives us more than 60 FPS. So, uh, still not consistent. It is dropping below 60, but, uh, you know, I, I still consider this a 60 FPS experience anyways. Just a few FPS drop is, is nothing. All right, so uh, on 1080p maxed out, Still using more than 300 watts of power, almost 315 watts of power, and then close to 12 GB of VRAM. So this is why it's important to have a card that's more than 12 GB in 2025 if you want to max out any game. 8 GB 
it's not worth it at all unless you want to play everything on like medium settings or something on 1080p then yeah go for an 8 gb card but if you are somebody who wants to max things out do not ever get an 8 gb card ever again because uh, even on 1080p you're gonna need more than 12 gb of vram to run things properly so that's uh, maxed out settings pretty good experience okay now let's turn off path tracing and uh, just go with ray tracing and see how that goes from 60 barely 60 to 85 fps pretty good that is pretty good um it is still using more than 12 gb of vram so it's not gonna make a difference on that regard uh on the vram usage but you are getting 20 fps additional so that's a pretty good sign when you turn off path tracing just with ray tracing it's gonna be a consistent 60 fps experience on the 5080 all right now let's turn off ray tracing and path tracing i just go with ultra settings it gives us 138 fps 140 fps experience so that's a huge jump from uh, turning off the ray tracing settings and the 0.1% lows are 72 i mean just dropped to 68 right there but still pretty impressive it's a high refresh rate experience right here uh, without any ray tracing it could be still better but you know 120 fps is more than enough to play a single player game okay now let's try dls's quality on ray tracing overdrive because uh, we were not able to get uh, consistent 60 fps with just a native settings We're gonna go to quality settings and that gives us almost 100 fps so this is actually upscaled to from 720p to 1080p so with those settings you can get almost 100 fps and uh, you can see the uh, 90 hundred is 58 percent usage that's pretty high because it's actually a lower resolution which makes the cpu go hard uh, with the processing and everything so it depends on your CPU as well. If you have a have an older CPU, the performance you see here can vary. But yeah, it's gonna be still a pretty decent experience anyway. So, all right, now let's turn on uh, multi-frame gen 4x on the same settings with DLSS quality and ray tracing overdrive, uh, just to see how far things can go on 1080p with maxed out settings. 320 FPS average. That's insane. Uh, on 1080p, this uh, is the max you can get uh, with path tracing turned on. 300 FPS is absolutely insane. You don't need anywhere close to this kind of FPS for a game like Cyberpunk. But yeah, there is still a small little delay when you turn the mouse around because of the frame gen's uh, negative effects, I might say. No matter what the case is, uh, there's gonna be a slight delay. So yeah, 320 FPS, pretty insane. All right, now for the finale, let's uh, finish it off on DLSS Ultra Performance Low Settings with Forex Frame Gen on 1080p. Let's see. Let's see the absolute maximum FPS we can get on this resolution. From uh, 320 to 750 average. Oh my goodness. So that is insane. And you can see the 9800X 3D is 70% uh, usage pretty much. Uh, but the GPU power usage is significantly reduced because we are performing on a, a lower resolution and still using 10 GB of VRAM because uh, frame generation uses a ton of additional VRAM to be able to work really well. So that's why it's uh, still 10 GB and plus. See, that this is why uh, 8 GB VRAM is another disadvantage because the only thing that they promote in their new cards, you need more than 8 GB of VRAM to work properly. If you have 8 GB of VRAM in games like this, you're gonna have stutters. And sometimes the game might even crash because you're out of VRAM, right? So it's completely pointless to get an 8 GB card. Just go for a 12 or a 16 GB card minimum. That is Cyberpunk. I hope you guys uh, find this video helpful. And if it did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be making a lot more new content like this every week. So if you're into that, keep subscribed. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great time wherever you are. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.